Can I ask both of you, first of all, for your immediate reactions on seeing that programme? Lady Asquith, what are yours? Well, mine is uh, that it gives a totally misleading account of the suffrage struggle, because it attributes the victory, and in fact the fight itself, solely to the militants, to the suffragettes. Mm. I happen personally to think were an obstacle. <laughs> I think they delayed the granting of the franchise. That's my personal opinion. But anyone looking at the film uh, would not have guessed that the constitutional, non-militant movement, headed by women like Eleanor Rathbun, who to my mind was one of the greatest women who've ever taken part in British politics. And as I say, people don't remember her today. I only, of course, saw her in later years, and I was lucky to know her. Uh, no. But uh, it, uh, sh they laid the foundations of, of the of suffrage movement, and uh, th they are simply bypassed. Lady Stark. Well, I agree in, in that with, uh, with Lady Asquith, because it is true that the constitutional movement was going on all the time, uh, committees and deputations and selling of papers and indeed chalking of pavements, meetings, processions, all the rest of it. It was the, comp the constitutional movement which had the very first procession through the streets of London. That was going on all the time and it went on after 1914 when the militants packed up and there was still a great deal of work to be done in the final stages of, win of winning the vote. That program suggested that it just came like a sort of ripe apple falling into their lap. It didn't, you know, it didn't. There was a lot of work in it. But the program itself, I mean, it professes to be the story of, of Mrs. Pankhurst's organization. And, uh, and one must receive it as such. But the thing which I don't think it stresses enough is the personality of Mrs. Pankhurst herself. She was a most remarkable spellbinder. Of course, it's a pity that one couldn't have had records of, of her voice, which was uh, incredibly beautiful. You heard her speak? Oh, you? many times I heard her speak. And uh, the curious thing was that when she got into a, a police court, let us say, which is a sordid sort of place, the whole atmosphere of it was transformed into a sort of almost religious uh, atmosphere. Uh, she was like that. I think the movement killed her in the end. I think she became fanatical possibly a little mad, but uh, uh, she was the making of that movement. Now, you both suggested that there was a, um, the whole struggle was on a much wider canvas than the actual story of the militants that oh, we much. saw tonight. Um, how much were the different elements in the suffrage movement at odds with, you, with each other? How much did they disagree? Well, they disagreed on, on election policy, as, uh, as was made clear in the film, you see. The militant society was opposing the government. They said, uh, we're tired of private members' bills. Private members can't do anything. We must attack the government, whether the members of the government are friendly or not. It's the government we must attack. And, of course, Mr. Asquith was, was the arch enemy, whereas the uh, constitutional organization were prepared to back and support and work for any MP or, indeed, cabinet minister who committed himself to women's suffrage. And that did make a great difference. Uh, Lady Asquith, what attitude did your father, um, as Prime Minister, take to the suffrage movement before militancy came along? Well, he was far more friendly, of course, towards it. He was never... Uh, I can't pretend that he was an ardent woman suffragist. No. Uh, I don't know quite no. what it was that inhibited him. Uh, I, of course, was um, at the receiving end of the suffragettes. I mean, I saw it as a close-up. And oh. I was involved, involved physically. There was one occasion when you struggle. fought them off, wasn't more there? More than yes. one, far yes. more. I constantly had to intervene when they made savage assaults on my father. And uh, I think I'm not perhaps a natural uh, pugilist. I mean, I'm rather a weedy athlete, and uh, I'm not skilled in all-in or all-out wrestling, which is it, all-in. <laughs> well, but uh, rage uh, gave me a curious sort of strength. And I remember quite well, once we were peacefully playing golf together on the links at Lossiemouth, Rems MacDonald's home, and I suddenly looked up from my putting and saw my father being savaged, savaged by two women who looked quite maniacal. And I, 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 I closed with them. that They were trying to tear his clothes off. And he was sitting, he was standing rather, four square on the putting green, holding on to the lapels of his coat like grim death. <laughs> I tore first one and then the other off him 
But of course, whichever would the, the other one was always on by the time I'd got one off. And then finally, the detectives came to our rescue. They were never on the spot in the crisis. But I mean, that kind of situation was constantly arising, and it it, uh, it gave one an awful kind of aesthetic recoil in a way. Didn't this set up a dilemma for you as a woman? Because a woman of such strong character as yourself must have wanted to seize opportunities for your own um, scope well, of I your intelligence. Well, I wasn't a feminist. I'd grown up among brothers and 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 with my father. And I'm afraid I, I must confess, I was a very bad feminist. I was very cause-ridden. I mean, I was, uh, I, I was um, uh, ardent, uh, not do-gooder, but I, um, I burned <laughs> mm. <laughs> to right wrongs, etc. But uh, women, I must frankly confess that voteless women were not to me the most urgent or the most clamant need of the day. I was far more harrowed by this stark contrast between poverty and affluence. And as I think what people forget about that time is that the franchise was very, very selective, limited and discriminating. Even and for men. property was mm -hmm. the main qualification. And that the women who most needed help wouldn't have got the vote. And to me it seemed every bit as unjust uh, to disqualify uh, someone from, to disfranchise someone on account of their poverty, as to disqualify them on account of their sex. The, pr the programme also suggested that um, Asquith was opposed to the vote for women, and Churchill was too. And no, well, uh, Churchill, I, 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 I went through his vagaries on this. He was, in principle, pro-women's votes. I mean, quite frankly and quite honestly, he went up to Manchester to fight his famous free trade election there, this was when he was leaving the Tory party, and free trade was the bridge over which he passed to the Liberal Party. Every one of his meetings was wrecked by these screaming, howling uh, women. And the, Man the Mancunians, I believe that's the thing, that were, were furious. And he, on one occasion, when they'd at last all been ejected in the course of an hour of interruptions, uh, said to his audience, um, as a matter of fact, uh, I'm really rather inclined to agree with them that they ought to have votes. But I'm not going to be henpecked. This was frightfully popular. And whenever he went out in the streets, they used to shout at him, don't be henpecked, Winston. Mm. It was this sort of force majeure, this nuisance value, I think, which not only the politicians and the cabinet ministers, but the public resented. Now, uh, uh, Lady Asquith obviously feels yes. that the militancy held up the cause, yes, did damage to women's suffrage. Do you agree with her I entirely? would think that after about 1910 or 11, no, perhaps later, after the conciliation bill broke down, no. uh, when militancy developed into uh, uh, real sabotage, uh, such as we saw, for instance, on the screen, mm. I think then it did harm. I think it did. But I think the early stages of militancy didn't. Uh, I think the, uh, after all, Christabel Pankhurst's exploit at the Free Trade Hall in 1905, she was the first person, I think, to go to prison. And the later prisoners did stir a tremendous amount of enthusiasm among women. And I'm inclined to think at that time that the constitutional movement under Mrs. Fawcett was in a sense for a time parasitic on the militant movement which which worked up tremendous enthusiasm among women and then their reason told them to go and join the constitutionals do you see the problem they they faced was that the um, constitutionals had worked from oh 1870 yes, exactly. to 90 and got yes. very hardly anywhere it was absolutely true and mrs Just fawcett recognized it when, uh, when that affair happened at the Free Trade Hall, she said, we've worked for how many years, I don't know how many, and now at last we're in the news. Do you think, in fact, militancy was inevitable? Oh, that's a difficult question, isn't it? Is anything inevitable? I don't know. Uh, 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 of course, we were all exasperated. We were exasperated by the behavior of the government, uh, which just wouldn't budge. And another thing that was exasperating, you see the that liberal administration was a very brilliant administration and it laid the foundations of the welfare state and at every turn it was 
indicating what could be done for social conditions by legislation. And yet, you see, women were out of the legislative pattern. And yet, uh, your, the majority of your father's cabinet were for votes for women, uh, a limited franchise for women, but refused to pop, put a bill and carry it through. Well, I don't know whether a majority were. I, I'm afraid I wouldn't like to say that accurately. Mm -hmm. I remember yes. very well that some were hotly against. I think um, that was. McKenna was against and Lulu Harcourt was against. Winston's enthusiasm waned. I'd like to say, uh, waned after, he, after they mm -hmm. made such a nuisance of, uh, of themselves in his campaign. Now, there's one thing I'd like to uh, say just on what Mary said about them, they, there's no doubt that they advertised the movement, but of course you can advertise yourself to your detriment. Now this uh, Pankhurst uh, yeah. meeting in Manchester may have been a success, but uh, their subsequent demonstrations, I'm quite sure, did them harm. They had absolutely not a ray of union. They were fanatics, but a fanatic should be dramatic. Well, I've seen countless of these demonstrations. They were rather squalid scrimmages and scuffles. I'm talking now of militancy. And uh, uh, to see uh, a, a woman uh, in hideous, not a woman, but a mass of women, in absolutely hideous disarray, with a distorted face, a hat hit endwise, and one of those uh, very elaborate edifices of Edwardian hair, which we used to all have to pile on our heads there. Uh, seeing it fall into ruins uh, with a shamble of combs and hairpins, uh, it was a very unesthetic sight. But when do you think, Lady Asquith, your father would might have come round to giving the franchise? Had oh, I think kind of he was rapidly he, coming he round. He would have done so. And I think he was in, enormously impressed, of course, by their war work. How the moment war began, I, I mean, he, 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 was, was he was converted, yes. How extensive was the feeling among women in all classes that they wanted the vote? One gets the impression from the photographs in the film tonight that they were really rather upper class and really well dressed with uh, uh, private means, the sort of families who could support ladies going out to well, protest it, in the it park. Well, it wasn't only that. You see, it was it, certainly the bulk of the work was done by leisured women. It had to be. It had to be. Uh, the women who afterwards went into social service, went on to committees, you know, went on, uh, organized a League of Nations union meetings and all the rest of it. It was, it had, of course, a strong working class support from, uh, especially in Manchester. But uh, it was, in, in a way, a middle class agitation for that reason, that, uh, that it's only middle class women who had the leisure to pursue it. Mm, I should say that certainly. Yes. Most unexpected people. A very frail and extremely sensitive and refined creature like Lady Constance Lytton, very delicate too, physically. She, to our amazement, but became a suffragette. She was forcibly fed. And this yes. is, is one of the, mm. uh, and again, an illustration of the lack of drama that they showed. She threw a stone through a window or through something or at something. I don't know if she hit it. They were lamentable hitters. But uh, <laughs> instead of throwing a rugged stone, which has a certain amount of natural dignity, one thinks of a galah and egg and so on. It was wrapped up neatly in brown paper, tied up with string, and votes for women or some yes. other not very striking slogan written on it. You see, they just punctured all their gestures. Ah, they went off like flat tires. Can I, can I ask you but about... Sarah, that particular gesture was highly dramatic because she was arrested. She, oh, she was, was sent to Holloway, Certainly, and because she was, she was Lady dead. Constance Lytton, or yes. so it was thought, yes. they said she wasn't fit to hunger strike, yes. and they sent her, they, they released her. Mm. She then disguised herself as a working woman, disappeared, mm. uh, and reappeared at Liverpool yes. under another name, got arrested, <coughs> sent to prison, was forcibly fed, and nearly killed. Oh, she and, was and a heroine. Then she, she was a heroine, and then she came out and appeared on the platform of the Queen's Hall, I saw her, I was there, and gave an account of what she'd done. It was nothing if not dramatic. No. Mm. But, but there the, were what the cruel thing was, that they were heroic, as I mean, they we've were. seen on this mm. film. They were heroic, but their heroism, their courage, uh, was, uh, as I've said, punctured uh, by their extraordinary want of humour. 
uh, and by the aesthetic recoil, which they inspired, even in not very squeamish people. But they also, they there also stirred people the Guild by of Honor. Uh, I'm just now mm. giving you an illustration, because I don't want to make generalizations without any... Uh, called the Guild of Honor. I don't know if Mary ever heard of it. I remember it. Guild of Honor. If you yes. joined the Guild of Honor, you had to swear that you would never have a baby <laughs> until women got votes. And then there was this extraordinary woman who was referred to in the uh, in the film, who uh, thought it was an insult to women that uh, God's masculinity should be assumed and that he should be referred to as he. I mean, why not she? I mean, all those things were so absurd that they a little bit obscured these stories of high and misguided courage, who knows. Had I think forcible feeding was a disgusting thing and they ought mm. never to have done it. Had you, mm. in fact, not been so distressed by the militancy and, in fact, its own involvement with your family, do you think, as you grew older, you would certainly have campaigned constitutionally for votes for women yourself? Oh, I think I should. I think I should. I was obviously out of that. I, I couldn't have in the state mm. of the cabinet, world, but I never would have been... Um, I mean, I pray God, I never, I'm sure I never would have been militant. I mean, it, it was really very, very unpleasant. Now, and they were very dangerous. I mean, the uh, the um, fires they spoke of. Well, I mean, it's not true that they didn't or mightn't have hurt anybody. Lord Harcourt's house was set on fire with his four children in it. And the nursery wing was lit. Not on purpose, I'm sure, but they knew that there were children there. I mean, uh, when I'm driving... Um, through the streets of Dublin, which I did after a big home rule demonstration in an open horse-drawn landau with um, John Redmond and my father. A uh, hatchet, an axe, was flung out of the cloud at, at these two men, at my father, of course, and it just missed him by a hair's breadth, but it cut Redmond over, open very painfully across his face and in there, and he bled like anything. I mean, it wasn't a dangerous thing, but it was a dangerous thing to do. I mean, I think they were quite reckless about life and limb. Do you agree with that? Well, they were, I think, in the later stages. And I think if it had gone on, uh, they would have uh, adopted far more serious forms of militancy. And think, in fact, that's what Mrs. Pankhurst and Christabel Pankhurst intended to do. And that's why their most faithful and devoted adherents, Mr. and Mrs. Pethick Lawrence, refused to uh, agree and were thrown out of the movement. There was an anti-suffrage league. Oh, that yes, found... there was. Did you have experience of them? Well, I used to go to meetings of it. It was led by Mrs. Humphrey Ward and backed up by Lord Curzon. What were they like? Very ladylike. Rather aristocratic. And I thought extremely stupid, but then I would think that. Were you there to object to them? Oh, no, I, I know, no. I once had a, a wonderful debate between Mrs. Fawcett and... I forget who it was... But the, their most distinguished member was Miss Violet Markham, the best feminist I've ever known, a real feminist. And a very able woman. And a very able woman, but she came round yes. in time. Mm. The intention of uh, the suffrage movement when they went to the East End to try and recruit yes. women for the campaign yes. was to redress social evils that they saw there, social evils that, that obviously distressed you too. How much difference do you think women having the vote made to the whole development of wealth? welfare in Well, I, d I, I don't think it had time to. I mean, the welfare movement was... Uh, oh, do you mean in the years, throughout the years, mm. you mean? Oh, it's very difficult to assess. Mm. Very difficult to assess. I've known a great many extremely reactionary women. I mean, <laughs> there, there are all kinds of women, just there are all kinds of men. One of the questions I most mind being asked uh, when you're asked to write an article or that is, what is the woman's point of view? Makes me absolutely furious. Can I ask you then whether yes. you consider there are many um, inequalities still remaining that you feel it's essential to redress uh, now? Well, of course, the only profession which is now closed to women, well, two professions perhaps, uh, the stock exchange and the church. Uh, I don't know how long they'll hold out. I would back the stock exchange to come in first. Well, we, of course, the church has been breached. Not the Church of England. No. By people like Maud Royden. Ah, yes, and Elsie Chamberlain. Uh, Maud Royden had to <coughs> preach outside her church. Yes, but, I mean, she did Yes, I, I know. They are going to... They're, I mean, they're I think... I th I'm, I'm not sure that I wouldn't back the church. <laughs> they will fall soon, anyway. Well, what about the status of women in general, though? Do you feel that the, uh, the attitudes within society now are 
are adequate to justify the whole of the, the, the fuss that was made, the enormous struggle and sacrifices that were made, or do you feel it's now so different that one can't, in fact, compare? Oh, tremendous results. You see, the whole emphasis, so much of the emphasis on, in politics and legislation now is on things that matter intensely to women. Well, one of the first things, maternal mortality, infant mortality, family planning, all sorts of things. Uh, and after all, it's the business of politicians to, to appeal to the housewife, isn't it? And if yes, they don't, but I, so but what? I mean, would you say that there were more women interested in all these things than men? Not necessarily, I don't think. I mean, I, I don't yes. recognize, you see, sex yes. as a barrier in political outlook. I've known very reactionary women and very reactionary men, and lots of men are intensely interested in questions you've, uh, you've yes, mentioned. Yes, I think I think And there so. aren't more housewives than, house, than, than their husbands. In fact, uh, husbands are becoming much more numerous, as you know. Yes. Women are going down and men are going up. Yes. The harem uh, mentality and the harem yes. approach yes. Uh, to marriage and so on is going to be reversed. Yes. They're going to have polyandry or something yes. instead. And why is that? I because mean, I don't think that all things yes. that have done do good to women and all this family yes. planning, which I agree with you, uh, and, uh, and things like the abortion bill, for instance, yes. also... I mean, after all, men uh, have shown themselves in the House of Commons. Politically, I mean, uh, there is no yes, distinction. Men be interested. Yes. David Steele uh, fought it through. Yes. I mean, I'm, I'm now talking about abortion. I mean, whether one's for or anti, yes. it inspired tremendously strong yes. feelings. Yes, it did. Mm. Yes. And one could think of other things. Lady Asquith, Lady Stark. Look, may I just finish by reading a quotation from Mr. Asquith? Please which he wrote to Mrs. Corbett Ashby in 1927 on the eve of the final act which gave us equal franchise. Uh, he wrote it to Mrs. Corbett Ashby as a message to liberal women. Uh, he said, remind the women of what women did, even against a powerful man like me. Sometimes I think their me methods were foolish, but they displayed courage, persistence, and hard work. That was our arch enemy, Mr. Asquith. <laughs> Yes, well, it was a very wholehearted tribute. Yes. Thank you both very much. <laughs>